Okay. I was collaborating with one of my favorite <clears throat> young students, related to me, on a TI-83 looking at sines and cosines, and I went through some flashbacks, and I thought about my daughter with a computer in the classroom and how it's not being used, um, even to run a calculator emulator, and I thought about my students who have phones and other things, and I thought, you know, Let's look at GeoGebra and see how it works with this, one of these fundamental cool equations that ties a lot of the applied trigonometry or the applied circle to so many different things, to biorhythms, to the Earth going around the Sun, the Sun going around the galaxy. And I remember that there was one particular spot in here where it was weird the, gra the, the scale was weird. So this was the place here. So I'm going to show you again. For in terms of always setting up your scale right, you got to go to Options, Graphics View, and change it there. When you know a better way than that than me, let me know. But I'm just going to go here from a minus 100 if my keyboard works. I'm going to hit a pause here and get the coffee. But learning how to set this up, and then we're going to look at the standard form for trigonometric functions, and particularly play around with the phase shift between cosine and sine, which uh, we were struggling back and forth with whether it's positive or negative in terms of that shift. And we thought about different ways to do it, and I stumbled on the fact that it's the circle that is the basis of all this, as everyone in Wikipedia talks about. I'll hit a pause here. All right, that was paused. Hit that here, and I'm going to try this again. Hopefully, my keyboard's working. Minus 100 to 100. And I'm not sure whether you can just go down here and change the 1 to 1, or you just have to go over here and minus 100. So, learn to set your axes to be consistent so it graphs purely and if you notice here that's not necessarily what it's doing for me so I'm going to try to go one to one it's not let me and then it did you know, it just put this at the same scale so that's what I did there alright so learning to do making sure your scales are set right so when you pull this off a circle is a circle so you can kind of very quickly circle with center through point hopefully you can key something in there a there and then another point there so different circles and the circles are looking like circles so that's what you want so what was the basic equation that we were looking at well it was a a vertical shift plus b plus b an amplitude so I'm going to do with one plus two which is the amplitude times the sine and I'm going to double check that we know how to put these in in this program sine of 3 x I'm sorry sine of 3 open x is the angle plus the shift plus 4 and graph that and it's an invalid input so well, one thing that would make it a better input is that. And there you go. Interesting. I had a little bit of a problem there. So we have in that immediately we have what we see is the vertical shift. Um, and you see how it rewrites it. So I'm going to change my vertical shift. I'm up here in the f of x. And I'm going to change that to 0. So if you start writing things this way, and you know I don't like the fact that it actually eats that zero so you can't see it but it does and we can change that now to one and I don't want to do that edit undo we don't want to change that we wanted to change this get rid of that and change that to one and now as you start to look at this, you realize that this is, and we're going to take out the 3, everything is obviously set to radians, and we're going to see whether that's true. You know, as if 2, there's about 6 pi, and then that shift here, we're going to see, we're going to get rid of that as well. 
So learning right away to play around with that shift and then putting an equation back, let's just do, and then playing around with numbers like this to get the intuition as to what each of those things do, particularly the phase shift as it works uh, inside that set of parentheses there. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and do um, sine cosine of x, which of course is out of phase by 90 degrees, and I believe right away you can click on one of these things and probably click, I'm trying to click within here, try to click on that, it's not letting me, and I can go ahead, somehow I did this, edit undo. So somehow it's not showing, oh, I turned on and off, nice. There's where the turn on and off is right there somehow. Uh, clicking on and off, it's kind of hard to respond, but you can, like in your calculator, the on and off clicker is the equal sign, and here it's there. And I'm just going to go cosine of, I want to shift the sine wave left, so I'm going to subtract pi over 2 minus, and I'm just going to put it in here because I don't know it, 3.14 is about 1.6. Let's see how that works. So that was wrong. I want to shift it. I want to go the other way. I want to shift it so it goes in the opposite direction when you do the shift. So I'm going to head a plus. And you get to that point where you're kind of shifting that wave. And so you start to look at what that shift is. And now, again, I can kind of go inside here. And I'm going to kind of change the frequency and see if that shift still works. So I'm going to do sine, put inside of here, put up, open another parentheses, and then say 2, and then close the double parentheses here. Let's see what it does now with that shift. Does it keep the shift, or is it off? And the shift is off which means that the shift, you need to kind of make this one something like 3.14 or a quarter, probably more like a quarter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this right away, cosine 2x, so we can get an idea on the shift here. back to here so it's, it's not real responsible because it's a, it's not really responsive because it is a um, and now we're looking at that even though it's out of phase if I put this down to 1.6 which is what we said is about half a pi that's a good one to learn pi over 2 well, that doesn't do it but how if I go 0 0.8 and so there you have it so this program right here, I put it in front of lots of different people, mostly uh, because it's free. It works on all platforms, Apple or Windows um, or Linux. And because, by golly, it's got a user base that's international. I'm kind of going out to that GeoGebra form right now, see whether it comes up. Um, you want to do it in French, Arabic, Catalonia. That's pretty neat, Catalonia. Very nice play, place to go, Catalonia. Um, down around Barcelona. Um, Croatia, Chinese, Czech, Dutch, Espanol, Finnish, for all the Nokia people. Italiano, Korean, Norsk, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, Slovakian, Turkish, and Vietnamese. So you got to eat that up. You got to realize that it's free it's got an international set of people out there and you're not going to play around with the language stuff but uh, realize that the this is a, a pretty well adopted international platform for mathematics it works very much like geometer sketchpad and it then fulfills a lot of different things so um, use that in your college apps thanks for listening